Hi everyone, it's Mr Wild here. I'm going to do a story for you that you can use in the classroom for your children. Um, it's a Cherokee myth and it's about a witch called uh, Spearfinger or the Witch of Nantahala. So, thousands of years ago when the Cherokee people first came to North America, uh, they would tell stories of um, legendary creatures and uh, magical people. They were a little bit like the fairies of Northern Europe. And the Cherokees believed in three types of fairies. There were the white fairies, who were a little like the uh, Christian angels. Then there were the bad imps and the devils and the witches and the goblins. And then the third type of fairy were there to help humans. Now sometimes the fairies would make mistakes because they expected so much of the Cherokee that things wouldn't always go to plan. Now this story is all about one of the bad fairies called Spearfinger. Now Spearfinger was magical. She would travel through the Smokies in and out of Tennessee and North Carolina and on her way through the Smokies she would make wonderful pathways through the woods or she would make a stone bridge so that she could cross over streams and brooks. She would never leave them for the Cherokee, she would always magic them away at the end. That's because she was bad. Now, the Cherokee people in the autumn or the fall would go into the woods and they would collect chestnuts from the sweet chestnut tree and this was a very important crop for the Cherokee because it would sustain them throughout the winter months. They could use the nuts to feed their animals and they could make the nuts into a flatbread which could feed their families. So the whole of the Cherokee families would take all their belongings, they would hike off into the woods and they would set up a marvellous camp. And the women would build beds for the children to sleep on with pine boughs and furs and then they would make lean-tos and an area to cook and then during the day the whole family would go off into the woods and they would pick the sweet chestnuts. Now at the end of the day, the children, after working lots, would ask their parents if they could go and play. Of course you can, but watch out for the copperheads or the dangerous vipers. So the children would go off and they would play in the woods. Now, this is when Spearfinger would creep through the bushes and at this point, she would look terrible. Her face had two red eyes and black sunken holes. Her hair was scraggly leaves. Her skin was made of stone. And round her waist, she wore a blacksmith's apron with a big leather pocket. In one hand, she carried a long, bony spear finger. And she was looking for her favourite food. Once she would see the children, she would magically transform herself into an old grandma. The old grandma would sit herself on a log and call over one of the Cherokee girls. Come over to grandma and let me comb your lovely black hair, she would say. Now, being a Cherokee girl and having long black hair, there was nothing better than having her hair combed. So the Cherokee girl would sit next to the kindly old grandma and let her run her fingers through her hair. Very slowly, Spearfinger would take her long bone finger and quickly and magically slice out the girl's liver and pop it into her apron, which she could devour later. The Cherokee girl would feel no pain at all and soon it would be time to return back to the village for supper. That night, the Cherokee girl let out a cry. The mother and father would run to her bed and find her dead. The next day, all the Cherokees came together. Has anyone known what's happened to the Cherokee girl, they would ask. One little boy with a very small voice said, I saw Spearfinger, but because his voice was so quiet, no one would listen to him. Time passed and the Cherokee went back to their work collecting the sweet chestnuts up in the trees. Again, the children would ask at the end of a busy day, can we go and play? Of course you can, said the Cherokee parents, but watch out for white poisonous berries. One little boy who loved to fish found a creek and he wanted to catch little trout. Spearfinger 
moved silently through the bushes. Flies buzzed around her. Her apron stunk of rotten meat and she magically turned herself into a grandma again. Let me show you how to tickle a trout. It's a skill that your father will love that you've learnt. The little boy watched in wonder as spear finger slowly tickled the belly of a trout which lay still in the water. Then she took her spear and quickly sliced out the boy's liver, popped it into her apron, which she would devour later in the woods. The little boy returned back to the village and again that night he screamed in pain and when his parents came to his bedside, he was dead. The elders were all puzzled. This was the second child to die. Has anyone any knowledge about what happened to the boy, they asked. The same little boy spoke up, but his voice was so quiet no one heard. It was Spearfinger. Two weeks passed and it came to the end of the season for collecting the sweet chestnuts. The Cherokee only had one day left of harvest, so they were busy picking as many chestnuts as they could. At the end of the day, the children asked one more time, can we go and play? Of course you may, but watch out for poison ivy, the mothers would say. A little Cherokee girl was making a braid for her friend out of silk when Spearfinger came along the pathway. What are you doing, my dear? Let me show you how to weave a lovely bracelet for your friends. The little girl watched in wonder as Spearfinger magically wove the, the cloth around to make a beautiful bracelet. Then she took her spear and sliced it into the girl, removing her liver, which she popped into her apron to devour later. That night, the little girl died in her sleep. But this time, the boy spoke up louder than before. It was Spearfinger, he said in his biggest voice. The elders decided that they would catch Spearfinger in the woods. They'd dig a big pit for her and then they would fill her full of arrows and kill her dead. The next day, the fathers all dug a hole. They covered it in bits of stick and leaves and they waited for Spearfinger to come through the woods. Late that night, slowly Spearfinger crept along the path. She was in her natural form. Her hair was covered in blood. Her apron had flies buzzing around it. Her skin was rotten and hanging from her legs. The Cherokee waited with their arrows drawn. And then suddenly she fell into the hole. Ah! She cried. The Cherokee fired their arrows, but they only broke into bits as they hit her skin. Then a bird called from up above. Shoot her in the heart. Shoot her in the heart. Shoot her in the heart, it cried. At once the Cherokees fired their arrows, but again the arrows only broke. The bird had lied. It was called a titmouse. And to this day, the Cherokee still don't listen to the titmouse because of the lie that it had told. Then, Spearfinger began to pull the sides of the pits down. They had to kill her quick. Shoot her in the hand, another bird cried. Shoot her in the hand. Shoot her in the hand. One of the Cherokee aimed an arrow and shot Spearfinger in the hand. The spear shot into the air and landed on the side of the pit. One of the Cherokee grabbed the spear and they still have that spear today in the Cherokee community. Maybe it will keep children safe hiding that spear from Spearfinger. Spearfinger let out a cry and she withered into a heap on the floor. All that was left was her bloody apron. Spearfinger was dead. The Cherokee rushed to the pit and they filled it with earth and then they rolled a huge stone on top. Now that stone can still be found today. And if you find it out in the woods, look for flies buzzing around it and the smell of rotten flesh. And beware, for Spearfinger is buried beneath.